Tatter Tots. Welcome back to my channel. Do I sound like a real YouTuber? <laughs> Number one, thank y'all so much, so much for chiming in on my last video and really giving your opinions and concerns and really speaking from not just your heart, but your own personal experiences with a family member that you have went no contact with. Y'all just really chimed in and really made my heart feel so happy and made it where I didn't feel alone, um, which I do a lot. You know, it's so weird because my husband has this great relationship with his mom and dad and they're divorced, but great friends. Um, so it's so much different from me. You know, my dad has passed and then of course, you know, my mom is down the road. Um, so it's much different for me. And I love that I am close with my husband's family. I love them dearly. My in-laws are wonderful. I don't know what I'd do without them. Like they're just, they're amazing grandparents to my children. If, if you guys don't know my, my four children or my children, um, me and my husband of 16 years don't have any children because, you know, he was in his early 20s when we met and I had already been married and had these babies. So we did not get a chance to have children. But, you know, so they just kind of came in and became these amazing grandparents. Um, and I appreciate them. That I hope my hair don't look like too, too terrible. Anyway, um, so thank y'all. Y'all just lifted me up in spirit and I cannot, I mean... Thank you. Y'all might just make me cry, honey. But listen, listen, I'm going to be reading questions off of my TikTok. Um, I finally got the Q&A button to pop back on my bow where I can open it up and I can read the questions. Um, but since I can't make a video for every single question that comes in, I thought it'd be fun if I read them on here. So I got them all written down. Uh, so it's kind of like girl talk here. I mean, if, if there's any of the you know, guys, gays, or theys, or anybody, you're fine, stay here too, love you, um, but it probably is gonna be like girl talk, so if you're down with that, then let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so the first question I got was, what was the hardest moment in your life? Um, okay, well, I think I've spoken about this before, but I would say there were two moments, but the first hardest moment of my life was that day that my mom kicked me out when I was 16. I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job, I didn't have anything but a newborn baby and that's it. And you know, there wasn't cell phones back then so I couldn't just grab a cell phone and call somebody to come and get me. Of course, I didn't have many people, you know, around me at that time. I didn't have many friends. A lot of my friends had disowned me when they found out I got pregnant. You know, nobody wanted to be friends with the pregnant girl in school, you know. Um, I mean, that's just kind of like how it was back then. I don't know what it would be like today, but I know back in 1997 and 98, that's how people looked at stuff like that. So a lot of my friends kind of walked away from me. Um, but I grabbed my baby and, you know, there was quite a distance from our home and the neighbor's home. There was like this wooded area between us. Um, and my mother wouldn't let me use the the home phone, you know, she was screaming. She was in the midst of an episode, get out, get out, get out. This was for no reason. Um, I was in my room feeding my baby and my mother had been gone. I don't know where she was. And she just walked through the door of my room and said, you need to leave. I don't want you here anymore. My mother said that to me. Um, and I could tell living with a mother who suffers with, you know, mental illness, you learn to recognize those moments. So you learn what not to do or what not to say in those moments because you know what will happen, you know. So I, I recognized it instantly that I better not say anything and I better not do anything other than just get out of that house. So I grabbed my baby and I walked down the road to my neighbor's house and I used their phone and I called my babies, my newborn baby, my son. I called his biological grandmother, which is his father's mother. And I asked her to come and get me and the baby. And she did. And that kind of started my life without. But the, the hardest moment was me 
walking down the road with this baby in this car seat, thinking to myself, I don't have a car, I don't have no money, I don't have nowhere to go. That moment was very, very tough for me. And I can't, I can't really express, I mean, I suppose I can. Uh, it traumatized me, I did. <laughs> Um, but I got through it. But the second most hardest time of my life, um, was probably when I had to make the decision to leave and divorce my first husband because I did not want to, but I knew that I needed to for the sake of myself and my children. I needed to, I, I needed to remove them and myself out of that situation. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I was not a perfect wife by any means. I was under serious stress with four babies under the age of five years old, you know, but I wasn't out having an affair. I wasn't out. I wasn't out doing anything like that. I just know that, you know, there were times the house wouldn't clean. There were times that, yeah, the, it was that I'm talking about that kind of stuff. But I didn't know at the time that that husband was dealing with an addiction that was so far past anything that I could imagine he would have been in. Um, I just didn't know. And which that led to physical abuse. And I dealt with that for quite some time. You know, I think the first time it happened was right after I had had our baby, which is my second baby. Um, and we got married in December and I got pregnant in December. So it was at least within a year of our marriage, the first incident had already happened. You know, but yeah, making that decision, leaving my first husband and, and ending that marriage, of course, I know now it was meant to be, you know, because of, you know, I, I truly believe that I was meant to marry him so that I could have our children and bring these children into this world. But I was meant to spend the rest of my life with my husband, Derry today. And that's what I feel about it. You know, we did not divorce in arguments or fights or anything like that. The divorce was amicable, and we signed our divorce papers and went and had lunch together. That's how easy it was for he and I. So, you know, we did go through some tough times whenever, you know, this this new girl come into play. Um, but we later became friends. And that's that's a whole nother that's a whole nother video. Um, but it made me mad because he did the same things to her, if not worse than he did to me. And that sucked because I felt bad for her. And I just wanted him to do better the second time around, just like I was. You know, I was doing better the second time around in my marriage. You know, I learned a lot from that first marriage. I didn't just get my children out of it. I, I learned what a marriage was really about. And what I needed to know to, to move on and, and have a successful marriage today. So I'm grateful for that. Of course. Um, okay. How do you know when they are the one? Well, I suppose I should, I should answer this. Like for me, I, I knew, I knew Derek was the one because of the way that I felt when I was with him. I, even looking back on my first marriage, I, I still didn't feel that way. Um, I think that I had just wanted a dad for my son so bad, and I had just wanted a family so bad, and that, that's why I, I married him so fast. I, you know, he had this really close-knit family, and the second me and my son came into it, it was like I had been there for years, you know, it, I had gotten the family I wanted, and, and and he was a good dad to my son, you know, and I, I think a lot of that was the reason why I, I married him so quick, you know, but I still did not feel the way for him as I do my husband today. My husband today just has everything, you know, he just has everything right here, right here, but it was the way he made me feel. I... I had never had anybody make me feel like that. And that night that I met him, which again would be a whole nother YouTube video. Um, I don't know. When I looked in his eyes that night, I just knew I was going to love him. I just knew I was going to love him. 
So I guess the answer would be you just know. It's a feeling you don't recognize. It's a feeling you've never felt before probably. And you just know. You really, really just know. And I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, do you think therapy is worth it? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. Absolutely. I have been in therapy for years for my PTSD, for my eating disorder, and for my body dysmorphia. Therapy, to me, is a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Um, I got so many benefits out of just all of it, like the whole circle, that I, I use it in my day-to-day -day life today. Um... Because I went into therapy when I just didn't have anybody. Yes, I had my husband, but my husband did not know about my eating disorder or my body dysmorphia. So I didn't have anybody, and I mean anybody, that I could talk to about this. I really was dealing with it all by myself. So when I went in there and felt like I actually had somebody that seen my point of view, that heard me, that listened to me, that offered their unbiased opinion, it kind of changed stuff for me. Like I started looking forward to going to therapy every Thursday, 3 p.m. I started looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, I, I do think, I think there are so many different types of therapy. If you're thinking about getting into therapy, choose the one that you feel is best for you. You know, um, also if I will say this, if you don't have insurance or your insurance don't cover it, a lot of the university colleges offer like a little plan of like 10 or $20 that you could pay weekly where your therapist is actually the intern, which is great because they've already went through their school and all they have left is the intern where they see the, the clients and stuff. Um, so if your insurance does not cover it or you don't have insurance, call your local university or colleges and see if they offer those plans like that. Um, and that might, that might help you out. That's what I did. I didn't have insurance back then. That's what I did. I paid $10 a visit every Thursday. And I mean, it, yeah, I'm a total supporter for all therapy. Do you hold resentment towards your ex? No. Mm -mm. Going back to yesterday's video, no. I forgive people the second they do something to me. Yes, I might be hurt, broken, sad, upset, mad, pissed off, whatever it is. But I have forgiven them like that. I'm not going to hold on to that. I'm going to I'm going to let it go and I'm going to release that from my body. You would be surprised how much trauma we consume and hold in our in our abdomen. It is ridiculous. Do some research on it and look it up. I am serious. Release it and let it go and move forward in your life. Um I used to, before therapy, I used to hold a lot of resentment towards him, thinking thoughts like, why couldn't he just get himself together? Why couldn't he just be faithful? Why couldn't he just get help? Yeah, I used to say those things and just be mad at the world about it. And then I just, I just, I just let it go. You know, I had forgiven him, but I would be so mad at him sometimes, you know? I would just be angry at him. Like, you... I felt like he messed up our family, our little family, you know, that, that we built together. I felt like he messed it up. So I did used to hold, you know, the resentment towards him, but I just, I let it go. It's, it is a cleansing process to let it go. So that's about the only regret or resentment I would have. Do y'all hold resentment? There's a lot of people a ton of people in this world that hold resentment towards people. And there are people that do not forget anything that you do to them that harmed them in any kind of way. You know, like a like an old ex cheated or something. Yeah, there are people that just cannot let things go and they hold it in the inside. And I'm telling you right now, it will make you bitter and angry. 
so bad so so bad it is so not good for your heart or your mental health to hold anything in the inside that you feel has broken you or shattered your heart or damaged you in some way for one i don't believe people are damaged i do not like the saying when people call someone or call themselves a damaged person no you might be a little broken but anything that is broken is repairable do you know? And it's, I, I don't like it when people say, oh, I'm damaged goods. No, you're not. No, you are at, you might have just been through some stuff, but you're not damaged, my darling. You know what I mean? I love these. I love these Clearly Canadians. Although this cherry is a little tart. Um, okay, so do you want more, do you want more children? No. No, no, and no, 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 no. Hell to no. Uh-uh. Um, I will say this. Uh, when I got my tubes tied, uh, almost 19 years ago, <coughs> excuse me, had I known that I was going to get divorced and marry a man that didn't have children, I would not have done that. Uh, Derek and I probably would have had two children by now. Hell, we probably would have had three children by now, okay? Um, I do regret that. I regret getting my tubes tied a long time ago. But in reality, I had four babies. I had four small babies under the age of five years old, you know? Birth control did not work on the second baby, okay? Why did I think it would work on any other time? Um... Yeah, but I, I, I'm always afraid that my husband will resent me one day for not being able to have children. You know, even if I got my tubes untied, I still could not go through an entire pregnancy because all of my children were born premature because of preeclampsia and or toxemia. Um... So I cannot carry a baby full term. So I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to go through all that. But secondly, with my kidney damage. So it just, it was meant to be, I know. But it really sucks that I c couldn't give my husband a baby. But now that they're grown and they're starting to live their life and do their own things. And yeah, I like it like that. I feel like I have did my due diligence with raising my children, and now it's time for me and my husband, and we can focus on us now, um, which we do very much. Um, so, yeah, I don't, if I had the opportunity to, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't have another baby, because they're all grown, and I don't want to go back to that, you know, I'm sure one of them is about to get ready to start giving me a grandbaby. You just wait and see. Watch it happen, honey. Um, are you happy? And this is from Cheyenne. Yes. Maybe not all day every day, but I'm happy every day. There will be moments where I get upset or stressed out or I cry or, you know, I worry about that. I'm a, I'm a huge worrier. I'm a huge worrier, okay? I stress out about everything, especially money. Um, I know I don't act like it, but these new clothes I got from Walmart, y'all got to see them. Um, but yes, I'm happy. I'm happy with my children. I'm happy in my marriage. My marriage is very, very important to me. Very important to me. We are 16 years strong, and we went through a rough patch. And coming from where we were then, which I take a lot of responsibility for it because of the job. And I spoke about this on the last video, that furniture store. It played a big part in almost ruining my marriage. Um, but I would never, I would, I would do anything and everything I can to never go back to that. So how good we are today is just amazing to me. You know, we rarely have an argument um, we are rarely not laughing or giggling. Um, you know, my husband still texts me throughout the day. I love you. I'm just thinking of you. I think that is an accomplishment in a 16 year marriage. You know, 
we're, we're never not together unless he's on the road, which he is now. Um, so when he comes home on the weekend, he wants to be with me every second and I want to be with him. You know, I like my long time during the week now. I like my long time. But man, when he gets home, it's good. You know, so I got a lot of reasons to be happy than I do not to be happy. I try to focus on anything good versus anything bad. You know, focusing on like just constant bad stuff, it'll do nothing but just drag you down, honey. It'll just, just drag you down. So, yes, I'm happy every day, just maybe not all day every day. <laughs> um, okay, so Jess says, how long were you when you started your period? If you must know, Jess, I was 12. I was 12, and I was in Pensacola. Oh, God, it's a whole story, honey. But it was awful. It, my first period was terrible. I was throwing up. I had stomach. It was absolutely awful. Y'all did not want to hear about that. Um, but luckily, luckily, again, I spoke about Miss Jenny in the last video. Uh, but when I did, I went to Miss Jenny and I told her. And Miss Jenny had explained everything to me, you know, properly. Um, about a year prior to that, years and years ago the schools used to show a video to like, you know, fifth and sixth graders about their body, about what's going to happen when you hit puberty and, you know, for girls and boys and all that. Um, when it, when I got to sixth grade, it came time for my parents to sign off on the letter agreeing for me to see the video. Now this, there was nothing wrong with this video. There was nothing inappropriate. Um, it just talked about what would happen to a girl Versus what would happen to a boy when puberty starts. Um, but it wasn't anything grab Nothing like that. It was it was totally okay. But it was weird that they used to do that. Because I don't know if they still do. But I know that they did back then. Um, but my mother did not sign the paper. She signed the paper for me not to see the video. You know, my mother was very big on religion and everything and thought it was not of God for me to learn about my own uh, physical health. So I didn't know much about periods and puberty and all of that, but I knew that I knew, I, I knew enough. I knew enough that I knew that's what it was when it happened. I did not know the story behind it, what the reason for it was. Uh, and actually I only thought it happened one time. Like, it just happened to you one time instead of once a month, you know? It's, it was really weird. But thank goodness Miss Jenny explained it all accordingly to me. Uh, made it make sense. She also made it kind of fun. Um, yeah, she she made it a better experience than probably a lot of people, I, I suppose. Um, but I did not go to my mother uh, during that moment at all. But if you want to hear that shebang of a story... Let me know, but I will leave you with this clip. I ended up laying on the floor of a bathroom in a prison because I we were there visiting somebody and it happened to me. Okay? Let me know if you want to hear the story. Uh, do you think you made mistakes as a parent? Absolutely. Um, who doesn't? <laughs> if anybody thinks that they are a perfect parent, they are full of you know what. There ain't a perfect parent in the world. Ain't never going to be. Stop trying. Let it go. Okay? Let the laundry pile up on the couch, honey. Okay? Let the baby's feet be dirty for a minute. Like it... Nobody is perfect as a parent. And we all parent differently. All of us. Uh, some of us parent how we were parent. Some of us parent how we wish we would have been parented, which is me. I parented my kids how I wish I would have been parented. That's why I'm so close to my daughter. Um, because I wanted my mom to be my friend, you know. But I, also, I wanted her to be a mom. She wouldn't do either one of them. She was basically just a provider for me. Um, you know, made sure I had a roof over my head and clothes to wear, basically. And food. Um, but I, I wanted... A relationship with my daughter like I wanted to have one with my mother that I never got um, and I'll I will never get that but 
Yes, of course I've made mistakes as a parent. I have hollered at my youngest. I have I threw cuss where I have absolutely. You know, sometimes we just have our moments and I've had moments before. Um but at the end of the day, my children know I love them <laughs> and they are my life and they love me. Um, but they also know that some of them drove me crazy in their teenage years. Gibson, the other one, the baby child, you know. So, no, there, there ain't a daggum perfect parent nowhere. So, please don't even try to get in the competition to be one because it's not going to work, baby. Okay? Your best is good enough for them. If your babies are happy and healthy and clean and fed and have a roof over their head, you know, and they come to you every night with their arms up like this saying mama because they want to hug before they go to bed. I think that speaks volumes for itself. Um, okay, so this one's from Emily. Has your marriage always been good? No. And I just touched on this a minute ago. Um, back when I was at the furniture store, the first 10 years at the furniture store was wonderful. It was owned by this older couple who had it for 50 years. The last three years I was there, the store transferred over and was bought by somebody else who worked at the other store, okay? But he, like, he basically took over the company. And when he allowed his wife to come in, that's when things went down, okay? I put that company for three years straight in front of my family, in front of my husband, in front of everything. So it took a serious whole toll on my marriage. My husband began to be mean and hateful and we weren't even touching any each, each other, nothing. It was it was awful. It was all, he was so angry at me for still being at that store and being treated like I was because I was so loyal to the original owner and then the one that bought it, I was loyal to him as well. And it would have been just fine had he not brought his wife into that business. Um, but I, w I was continuing to stay loyal to him because I was grateful that he even brought me into that position. You know, when they closed all these stores, 50 employees lost their jobs. I didn't. I, I got to transfer over to the new company, you know? So I was grateful and I felt like I I needed to be loyal. I mean, there's, there's more to the story there, but um, my husband was angry at me because I was letting this place destroy me mentally and destroy our marriage. I was driving 45 minutes there, 45 minutes home. I'd have to leave my house at like 6.30 in the morning. And then I'd get home to almost 8 o'clock at night, 7.30 at night, okay? Because I was driving 45 there and 45 back. I got no time with my husband, my kids, nobody. I gave that company my life. And my husband is not a husband that communicates what he is thinking or feeling. He will hold it all in. And then spew it all out in an argument. That's He don't now. That's just what he used to do. But we got through that and went into marriage counseling. Now we know how to figure things out and communicate. But, um, yeah, that was a tough time. That was a really, really tough time. If, if you can imagine how bad it is. I mean, y'all are familiar with my husband. Y'all see us on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook, how amazing we are together. That's exactly how, what you see is exactly how we are. But can you imagine getting into the bed with your spouse and they and they just turn over? Talk about heart crushing. You know, talk about heart crushing. And with somebody who has dealt with ED and body dysmorphia in the past, here I am thinking that it's something to do with me physically. No, it had nothing to do with me physically. And it had everything to do with me not giving my husband what he needed and taking care of me first. That's what it had to do with. Um, but left the job, left the place, got out of there. Um, we went to marriage counseling, which was great. We loved it. I think we went to six sessions, I think. Uh, that therapist was wonderful. Uh, she completely... Did not take sides, listened to both 
sides, gave her point of view, gave us like homework to do, which was which was cool. Um, yeah, we learned a lot from that. So no, we haven't always been happy, but we dang sure love each other enough to want to be happy and fix it. And we did. And now it's just been, it's been amazing. It's, it's been amazing. And he and I both will never go back to that. We will never go back to that. Um, okay. This is from Cynthia. What do I do when my mother-in-law is causing problems? Ooh, honey. I have answered this before. Let's get into it. Okay. Let me tell you. Your mother, and I hope she's, girl, I hope you see this. Your mother-in-law is not your responsibility. It is your spouse's, okay? If your mother-in-law is causing problems trying to derail your marriage, you need to let your spouse handle that. Because the second that you step in and try to defend yourself and your marriage, your mother-in-law is going to go to your spouse and say, look what she did. She said this, this, this. Do you see what I'm saying? They're going to turn into the victim. See, right now, you're the victim, right? But the second you retaliate, they then become the victim. So, you deal with this with your spouse, and you let them handle that. And if they don't stick up for you, or try to put their foot down and be like, hey, look, this is my wife, or this is my husband, you know, vice versa, whichever one it is, you know, they need to stand their ground for their family, because... You know, once you get married, you, you become one. You know what I mean? You become one. It's it's the two of you together. And how dare anybody try to destroy that or break that up or take that away or cause problems or anything. You know, I, I fortunately, I have a wonderful mother-in-law. Um, she's amazing. But I have seen mother-in-laws do that. And it really needs to fall back on, on the spouse whose parent it is. They need to deal with it. They need to step in and say, hey, you're not going to talk to my wife like this or you're not going to talk to my husband like this. You can either respect us and our marriage or you can step back and take some time for yourself and, you know, until you can figure out how to really come back into this family and be respectful. That's what I would do. That's exactly what I would do. You know, just because somebody is your in-laws, does not mean that, you know, they get to just walk all over you or treat you like crap and do it. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Especially when grandbabies start getting here. Those are your babies. Not the mother-in-laws. Not the father-in-law. So if you say, don't give my babies Coke after 7 p.m., I would hope that they don't give those babies Coke after 7 p.m. Because those are your children. You know, I can't wait till my kids have babies. They, I will be taking an instruction list from them. And I will be going by the book how they want those babies, what they want to eat or, or whatever it is when they come to Nanny's house. Okay, because okay? I think I'm going to be Nanny. I don't know. I'm thinking on that. But anyway, I'm going to be respecting my children's boundaries when it comes to their children. You know, I'm not raising those babies. They are. So I don't want them, you know off of their schedule just because they come to nanny's house. I want them to be just like they are at their home, you know? That's another big thing for me. You know, those grandmas and grandpas, come on now. Let's, let's respect boundaries. Lord, I wish my children would have had like this really, really good grandma growing up, but they didn't. But they did have an excellent grandpa and still do. He's the greatest man ever lived, okay? We love Papa Ronnie. He's a huge part of our life. Um, we almost lost him during COVID. Who child. He was in uh, ICU and, yeah, it, he is the patriarch of our family. And God forbid that day happens, I'm not going to be okay. And I know they're not going to be okay because he is, he is a wonderful, wonderful person. But anyway, uh, if y'all have some more questions, y'all can leave them in the comments or you can uh, do them on the TikTok where you do the Q&A, uh, whatever is more easier for you. I will be checking the comments uh, every day. So to make sure that none of them come through, uh, we will be recording the episode of the podcast tomorrow. 
Uh, also, if you want to do your Mother's Day cameos for anybody, Cameo is up. You just have to look under Shoe Lover 99 and they pop up. I had somebody ask me a question about that. Yes, I've got cameos for Mother's Day. Anyway, I hope you have a beautiful day. And we'll think of something we're going to come up with tomorrow or Thursday. And in the meantime, I love you. Bye.